This is the astounding true story of the chess robot that beat Napoleon. The automaton chess player was created by Hungarian inventor Wolfgang Kempelen and presented to Empress Maria Theresa of Austria in 1770. She was a noted skeptic and engineering enthusiast who enjoyed modern inventions. She was the sovereign of Austria, Hungary, Croatia, Bohemia, Transylvania, Milan, Parma, and other territories, and was also the Holy Roman Empress. The chess robot was known as the Turk, the Mechanical Turk, the Robotic Chess Player, and Maelzel's Chess Player. It toured the world from 1770 to 1854, nearly 100 years. It was first toured by inventor Wolfgang Kempelen, then by Johann Maelzel of Bavaria. It was often known as the Turk because the clockwork automaton was mystical, sorcerer-like, with a turban, robes, mustache, and a long pipe. The actual mannequin and cabinet were likely larger than this. No photograph exists of the actual device. In 1783, the chess robot beat Benjamin Franklin in a match in Paris. And Ben Franklin was a noted chess enthusiast, as seen by this paint painting depiction. In 1809, the Mechanical Turk defeated Emperor Napoleon de Bonaparte of France in 19 moves, allegedly. And Napoleon may have even attempted some illegal chess moves, which the machine noted. And Napoleon was also a chess enthusiast as depicted in this painting. So for the actual depiction of the AI chess automaton, we rely on period drawings. These show that the cabinets uh, these show the depiction shows the cabinets would be opened one by one for audience members and illuminated with candle showing intricate cogwheels cranks and gears and no human intervention the clockwork device would be wound up by its operator whirring and ticking sounds ensued human opponents played on a separate board away from the delicate machine. It used its left hand to precisely grab pieces and place them on the board. The automaton could do various human-like movements, and at times it would even answer questions by a letter board and smoke would emit from its pipe. Later enhancements allowed for more facial expressions, and it would even say check when it placed its opponent in check. The automated chess machine won most of its matches, beating many of the world's top chess masters. In England, it played 300 games and lost only six, always playing with the white pieces. On this pamphlet from the time, advertising pamphlet, it says, being returned from Edinburgh and London, this is uh, in London, being returned from Edinburgh and Liverpool, while giving the pawn and move, it baffled all competition in upwards of 200 games, although opposed by all the best players. The Turk would give its human opponents a chance by removing its king's bishop's pawn on f1 and allowing them to move first with the black pieces. A book detailing 50 of the best chess matches played by the Mechanical Turk was even released in London by an audience member who uh, notated down many of its matches and issued a book. The machine even solved a famous chess puzzle known as the Knight's Tour during its exhibitions. And this is sort of a mechanical exercise whereby the knight starts on one square and goes to every other square once, lands on every other square only once and ends up back in the same square and hits all the squares on the board. The chess playing Turk inspired many, including inspiring Charles Babbage, 
considered by some to be the father of the computer. Babbage would go on to invent the difference engine and the analytical engine, both of which are considered forebears of the modern computer and AI. But the skeptics abounded. Many thought the amazing chess playing robot was deceiving audience members worldwide and was not fully automated. Others were not so sure. In the Southern Literary Messenger of 1836, it says, the questions of its modus operandi are still undetermined. Everywhere we find men of mechanical genius of great general acuteness and discriminative understanding who make no scruple in pronouncing the automaton a pure machine, unconnected with human agency in its movements, and consequently beyond all comparison, the most astonishing of the inventions of mankind. There were many articles, pamphlets, and pronouncements that offered cynical explanations, denying the astounding mechanical intelligence apparently exhibited. Theories by attempted debunkers included magnets, off-stage manipulation, a human inside the mannequin, and an expert chess-playing dwarf, child, or legless adult hidden inside the machine's cabinets. Noted skeptics included Edgar Allan Poe, who spent 9,000 words in an 1836 article attempting to prove this was not a pure machine. Among his rationale of 17 points based on frequent visits to the exhibition, and this drawing was from his article, among his rationale of points, the machine did not make moves at regular intervals of time. Number two, the automaton does not invariably win the game. A pure machine would always win. Another is that the external appearance and deportment of the Turk were but an imitation of life, worse than a waxwork. The eyes roll unnaturally and the arms move in a jerky manner. When the proprietor of Maelzel is asked if the automaton is a pure machine, he will only respond, I will say nothing about it. Poe noted that, that although he was told the figure is said to be the size of life and said by others that he noted it is far above the ordinary size. The interior of the compartment is lined throughout with cloth, which could aid in shifting positions, partitions, and deadened sounds of movement. Poe said that there, are only, that there are six candles on the board during exhibition and only one or two would be sufficient to aid the spectators with a clear view of the board. Why would a machine need so much light and candles placed in specific positions? He also noted that when Baron Kempelin exhibited the chess player in Europe, an Italian in the suite of Baron was never visible during the playing of a game of chess and the exhibition was suspended when the Italian was ill. Since purchased by Maelzel, there is a man, Schlumberger, who is always in attendance, but who has no ostensible occupation than other than assisting and unpacking the automata. He is never seen during the exhibition, only just before and just after. Finally, Poe notes that the machine plays with its left arm, a remarkable circumstance. So, the full truth about the amazing AI chess bot of the 18th and 19th centuries will never truly be known. It is a mystery, lost to history. Was the first advanced AI chess bot created in the 1700s? Or was it simply an elaborate magic trick, which de deceived thousands around the world? Thank you for viewing.